再去对照一下，有的字有错的，还有拼音的。It's the winter holidays, and this class of six to ten year olds is brushing up their Mandarin. A few hours later, they will start on next semester's curriculum. Everything you've seen till now is illegal. Since 24th July 2021, private tuition during the holidays has been banned for all Chinese students below 16. This is known as Shuang Tian, or the double reduction policy. A policy aimed at reducing the pressures on students in the country's notoriously stressful education system. In this edition of Undercover Asia, we find out if these regulations have served its purpose, or has it backfired? When China rolled out the double reduction policy in July 2021, it banned private tutoring companies from turning a profit. A hundred billion US dollar market evaporated overnight, sending stocks of over 20 listed education companies spiraling. This is not a cheap policy, right? Overnight, basically 90% of the market cap of the tutoring industry evaporated. It was just gone. I think a lot of Western media was focusing on Chinese government trying to monopolize education and trying to uh, crash down uh, the tech sector um, or trying to chase out uh, foreign capital in the Chinese market. Not much explanation was given uh, about why we're doing this. That's why Mr. Ho, a former insider of the private education sector, published this article a year after the reforms. He explained that private tutoring has been hijacked by profit-making, so the double reduction policy was desperately needed. In my opinion, the true concern comes in three folds. One is the primary concern, which is education equality. So this is to restore education as a public good provided for the people, which your opportunity to enjoy does not depend on your monetary means. Secondly, the education sector cannot be subservient to financial interests. It should not be driven by profit making. And thirdly, I think this is to send a signal to demonstrate the government's commitment to maintain social mobility. So education as a channel for people to, um, to break through class barriers. Education as a means for those who can't afford it to climb the social ladder. That idea had its roots in the imperial examination or Ke Ju which was first rolled out in 607 BC. Men from any background could sit for the exam. Those who pass would be appointed as government officials. Fast forward 2,500 years, its modern successor was birthed. The communist government first introduced Gaokao, or the National College Entrance Examination, in 1952. Like its predecessor, everyone, no matter rich or poor, could take the test. Those who score higher marks stand a better chance of entering their dream university. Hey, 
。孤勇者，还有迪迦奥特曼版的。还什么？是谁发明了作业？作业为什么那么多<笑> ？Like many busy Chinese parents, Lu Ai left her son in the care of his grandmother in her hometown, Xinyu, a fifth-tier city. But three years ago, just as he was about to enter the final year of kindergarten, she decided to bring him to stay with her in Chengdu. In the hopes that the first-tier city would give him a better quality of education, but what Lu Ai didn't expect was the level of competition Zai Zai would face. My son's class of students, five-year-old boy, this child's English is already able to communicate. But our family, sorry, nothing. I was very fierce, 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 very fierce. Lu Ai quickly signed him up for online English classes, along with classes for Chinese and mathematics. Metal, metal, water, water, and uh, many other things. Of things. 我那一年的话，就是在疯狂的计划。他最多时候一天学十多门课，然后游玩的时间的话，可能就半天时间。去小区跟小朋友玩都很少。The private tutoring industry took root in the 1990s. In a span of a decade, some of its biggest players were expanding so quickly they started issuing shares to raise funds. In 2003, New Oriental Education even entered the New York Stock Exchange, the first Chinese education company to be listed in the U.S. In 2018 came the first signs that the Chinese government wants to rein in the burgeoning tutoring industry. Joel DeWald and his wife were then just starting out with their education startup, Grace English. About 2018, there was a great change all across China. They wanted to further regulate the training school sector. So they made it very clear and standardized the pathway to open a center and get licensed is step A, B, C, D. You could just go through the process, which was very difficult for a mom and pop shop. A lot of businesses tried and failed, but we persevered. And they were not the only ones who persevered. It's a blue dog or a yellow dog? A yellow dog. By early 2022, there were over 124,000 companies, big and small, like Grace English, across China, offering private tuition to elementary and middle school students. It was a tough business. It was a saturated market. To be successful in the market, we had to focus on a niche, and our niche was young learners. Our program was just so effective that it gained a lot of word of mouth buzz. But not all players in the industry could rely solely on word of mouth. As competition heated up, some begin to employ hard sell tactics to garner more business. Li Miao has a decade of experience selling both online and physical tuition classes. We often say two things, it's just two things, fear. All sales are always used to use fear to use the teacher. You always use fear. Where is it? Where is it? Our child is going to school this year. Now, we know a few words, and we don't know A, B, C, D. I'm also fear. In China, children begin formal education at the age of six. They go through nine years of compulsory education. Around the age of 15, in the last year of middle school, students face their first big test, the Senior High School Entrance Exam, or Zhongka. It streams students into two tracks, regular high schools for further academic studies and vocational schools for technical skills. 
typically those who don't do well in Zhongkao land up going to vocational schools. Those who made it into regular high schools will then spend the next three years preparing for the college entrance examination, or Gaokao. Chen Jiechen has four years of experience developing education software for students between the ages 8 to 15. As part of her role, she has been researching the challenges kids face as they go through the education system. In recent years, um, the word neijuan has become a buzzword in China. So neijuan referred to a situation where intensified competition does not produce more outcome. Instead, it only produces uh, more anxiety. There was an element where you, parents felt like they had to get these classes for their kids because everyone else was doing it. Xin Dongfeng, New Oriental, would advertise with things like, let us train your children or we will train their competitors. So they played on people's fear of getting left behind. Once you walk on the street, you see the billboards. When you turn on the TV, even the CCTV Chinese New Year Gala was title sponsored by these two turn companies. There's no way you can not see it. There was a very urgent need for a reform in the tutor industry. Because when you look at how the how the business is done, it's it's not right. Then, on 24th July 2021, the Chinese central government issued a policy paper bringing about the downfall of the tutoring industry along with all of its excesses. The policy paper basically addresses two parts of the issues. One part is the school homework, overall regulating the total amount of homework daily. And the other part addresses the tutoring sector. All local governments will no longer be giving out licenses to operate for academic tutoring institutions. The paper also mandated that tuition companies cannot conduct academic training on weekends and holidays. It's like the hammers dropped. And I remember that night I was calling up uh, my friends uh, in, in the field. They were like, yeah, we don't know what to do. And this thing suddenly came and we don't have a business. But it soon became clear 
that double reduction was not enough to stamp out tuition for good. Hello YouTube, this is Joel from Dream VR, and I'm here to talk about my former day job, which was running this training school, Yuear Jiaoyu, in China. To rein in the private tutoring industry in 2018, the Chinese government started regulating tuition centers, laying out straightforward processes to set up one. Before that, it was done largely through Quan Shi, or relationships with the local government. I'm nervous. Wow. The changes in rules made things easier for Joel and his wife Hannah. They opened Grace English in the same year. When we opened the center, it was like a, a, a great, it was a godsend. It was a door opened for us to operate legally with the protection of the local authorities. We were a small business and it's doing well. We have good teachers who work together with us. During the center's heyday, the couple and their team of teachers were teaching English to 170 children. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Then came the double reduction policy three years later, banning all academic tutoring classes during weekends and holidays. We were basically a mom and pop business. We had just started our summer classes. And so for us, it was this notice, you can't have summer class anymore. We banned it during summers, which was really a hit because that is our, that's your most profitable time. That's when businesses go from the red into the black. At first, I still have this feeling that we are safe, but anything related to English is not allowed. When we first closed down, it felt like my world was caving in and crashing. <laughs> I cried. <laughs> you did? Wow. Sometimes when I thought about it, when it was empty and the floor was ripped out and everything was, I mean, I, I put my sweat, blood, sweat, blood and blood and tears into that for years. When the laws did an abrupt 180, it's like suddenly the law's out to get me. Like it's, it's considering what I do to be a social ill. And so to be considered like a, a societal ill that, and then to look at my center that I suffered over and it shut down, I would get emotional. The double reduction policy sent a chill through the industry. Within three months, over 80% of tutoring companies closed shop most of the remaining companies pivoting to other businesses or turning into non-profit entities as mandated by the policy. So this is the former location of my training school. You can see now it is a dental office. It's a family dental practice. That, that was where I used to work. For some parents, the double reduction policy meant relief. Yuan Mei has a 15-year-old son sitting for Zhong Kao this year. Yuan Mei is not her real name. She chose to use a pseudonym for fear of jeopardizing her son's future. But it soon became clear that the tutoring sector did not die off completely. Finally, I 
，呃，这种推广推荐的什么培训班的这种各种各样的短信。双减之前，我印象中好像是没有，我不知道他们从哪得到我的电话，就是这几年一直在不停的给我打电话，我基本上都都都拒绝了。我昨天是前天接接到那个电话以后，我听到他说是，好像人大了什么一个特别有名的什么数学老师，哎，我就有点动心。本来有的老师讲的就很好，他可能五分钟一点都透，讲五分钟，我们孩子立刻就灵光乍现，完全通了呢。Despite the ban, demand for tuition stuck around, and Ann Wei is taking advantage of that. She runs a childcare center for elementary school students, and her center continues to hold academic classes during school breaks. 就是下学期的内容，然后做一点预习，自己做嘛。他们已经做了前面四页了哈。然后你们上周没来，所以这周补一下哈。社区里面就是他睁一只眼闭一只眼托管，因为家长有时候需求没人带小孩嘛，没有文件强制规定不允许托管，只是不允许课外辅导。每个字再去对照一下，有的字有错的，还有拼音的。双减政策才出的时候还是有点头大，因为那个时候相对的补课你不敢去宣传了，你就停了。就无非就是社区的人来查，他就告诉你不要开了，你就可以把门关了。主要是可能是因为我们是社区，因为我们做的是周边的社区嘛，都是一些熟悉的家长，只要没人举报就不会有问题。大范围的表面上大范围的减少了，但是就是原先在补习的家长还是会想办法补习的。家长的心里是不想让孩子差，他不会因为一个政策就放弃了。那身份基本上就是靠熟人介绍吗？熟人介绍，嗯，有我们小学很近，就在我们嗯从这个门进的嘛，另外一边门出去对面就是学校。Yuan Mei passed on mathematics tuition, but her son struggled with English after transferring from Beijing to Henan in middle school and was faced with a different curriculum. I asked my friends to introduce me, and then I know the teacher is very good, you can try it. I took my child to try it, and the child listened to it, and I said, what do you think? I think I can. Then the child started listening. It was all about the same thing, but it was not only about the public speaking. My friends and my friends are all in. Despite the restrictions and the dearth of tuition companies, Yuan Mei took only one week to find a tutor. But there was a catch. China's double reduction policy brought the booming after-school tutoring industry to its knees overnight. The intention was to relieve student stress. But it soon became clear that tuition stuck around. Thank you. 这三个都是你画的吗？嗯，我可以带回去吗？可以啊。哦，好。这边，你一个一个肩膀背吧，要不要两个肩膀背 ？Tai Tai entered elementary school after the ban on private tutoring took effect. Liu Ai could help him in most academic subjects, except English. 那这个时候啊，对不起，我们只能就是小范围内，然后去问哪个家长。那。这个时候的话，你要去找到更优秀的师资，那这个时候你就要花费更大的力气。嗯，据我所知，很多优秀的老师，他可能学生已经排到几年以后，就不停的去那个，就投石问路嘛，不停的问身边的人啊，你们家在上英语没有？然后路上看到外国人或者是去接孩子的时候，因为学校肯定有一些外国家长嘛，我就会
拉下脸，就是去问他，你们教不教小朋友英语？我们现在是直接去哪儿啊？去老师家里，直接把他送过去。喂，老师，我们现在送吉米过来哟。就这个过程，我持续了一年半，终于被我问到了一家。我就非常珍惜那个机会，因为那个那个老师他也是非常有实力的，他是博士。Tai Tai attends English tuition for thirty minutes every week. During the school holidays, Lu Ai would also arrange secret homestays for her son at the tutor's home. 没有，我是说，如果你还在国内的话，我周六周天送送他过来缠着你。<笑>我们家两个，错了，你只要人还在境内，我就去找你。<笑> Meanwhile, Lu Ai's two-year-old daughter is also getting a head start. 不进，没爸爸，一颗没进，一颗都没进。你过来嘛，你过来嘛，他真的生气了。他肯定是生气，我们昨天把他直接丢下。两个孩子一起去，啊、嗯，然后就大的就主学专业类的，小的就是培养他的一个语感语境。爸爸还能给他搂走，没事，让他看嘛。包括寒假、暑假，我都会丢在老师家，可能十天半个月、一个月的那种。The effort is showing results. Today, I want to tell you a story about the crazy spider. He was scared. In a class of 30 students, Tsai Tsai ranks second in English, behind a classmate who grew up in the United States. In the tallest tree in the forest, while climbing up a tree, he handled the pot in front of which made the climb difficult. You feel like now? 有必要上这个英语补习吗？有必要。为什么呀？因为我我妈妈在呃要求我就是赶上我们班英语最高的那个。可是他是在美国长大的，你怎么比啊？呃，应该我可以再去美国住一年，或者在那个在那我老师家、呃、那个再上上上上一年吧。哦，所以是他，你妈妈想让你去，一直想让你去达到那个水平，但你自己呢？呃、我自己嘛。我自己，我自己也是挺想上了，因为那个老师真的教的很好。以前虽然时间有点忙，但是也有也有那个玩的时间，但现在几乎没有了。如果就是你把国家的政策，就是你觉得双减这个东西真的是减负的，我觉得真真的就是个傻家长。其实我觉得可能对父母的要求会更高一点。如果你说出了孩子的成长是靠他自己，我觉得这种家长是非常不负责任的，是自己都没有活明白的人。这就是我工作的地儿，这年底了，胶片都是在催。老婆孩子现在也不在这儿嘛，我现在基本就每天就睡在这儿，就睡在这个沙发上。这两个月基本都没有回家。回家路上成本也挺高的。Gong Er Kang, a video editor at a production house, is the sole breadwinner of his family. His wife and kids moved back to their hometown in Shandong Province a few months ago to save on expenses. Before double reduction, his children regularly attended tuition. 我现在家里有两个孩子，老大是儿子，已经上小学五年级了，闺女今年刚入学，上小学一年级，补了一段时间就会好一些，然后基本上各方面成绩也会好一些，也会得到学学校老师的一些那什么夸奖了，说就最近有进步。When double reduction was first introduced, it didn't immediately change his mind about sending his kids for tuition. 一开始也问了问，等于说就是找了一些机构问了问，看有没有相关的，但发现就各种原因嘛。他现在都只能一对一了嘛，而且就是说这些机构也都不太正规，而且一对一他肯定价钱就要高了。你原来报班的话，一个月可能几百，现在每节课就得几百了。如果说按照之前的话，之前你报这种培训班还好，没有那么贵的。现在等于说一贵，然后再加这些东西，它属于违法。
Estimates vary on how much tuition costs have spiked after double reduction. In first-year cities, some one-to-one -one tutors are now charging as much as 440 US dollars an hour. That's at least 10 times more than before. It's also about a third of the average monthly wage of a white-collar worker in such cities. It's a financial burden that Gong is unable to shoulder. He's left with little choice but to make peace with the current situation. Ten 真正想学的人他可能还在学我确实会被我们学校或者身边一些那些鸡娃鸡的特别凶的人会去冲击过就会发现你拼不过人家呀人家真的就是家庭他有实力For most of the year, Cao Yanxia and her husband work in Beijing, which is an eight-hour drive from their hometown in Henan. They have three children. The oldest dropped out of school at 18, and they are fighting to make sure the younger two don't follow in her footsteps. <laughs> Before double reduction, the single tuition center in their town was Yanxia's only hope. But when double reduction came, the tuition center shuttered. Yensia had to find other ways to make sure her kids could keep up with school. Mm -hmm. 
，因为眼泪跟不上了。然后我在想，这不行啊，就想其他方法。我看你作业咋样？你认真一点，老子这样不认真，不认真。This family is left with one costly choice: private school. Why did I choose the public school? Ah, the school is not competitive. The teacher is just that, not strong. Ah, just just easy. The public school is really good. The teacher 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 is really good. 那段时间我说，哎，你之前他那个数学，呃，成绩比较好，为什么突然之间那个语文成绩现在怎么已经超越那个数学了呢？这为什么呢？我儿子说，妈妈，你知道为什么我的成绩现在赶上去了？为什么？因为我我语文老师，嗯，那个给我去补课啊，天天给我去补课呀。It's a huge financial sacrifice for the parents. As the family must now tighten their purse strings all year round, before double reduction, tuition cost a few hundred yuan. School was free as they were enrolled in a public school. Now, private school fees for both children take up more than a third of their combined yearly income. 反正是，你要挣钱，反正够吃够用，反正你想，不能有灾。不能有病了啥了不能有，要有了话就麻烦了，又没钱。你要是上医院了什么了，你要上个医院你根本看不起病，只能够吃够用。There have been criticism of the Shuangjian policy, saying that instead of reducing education. Inequality, it actually exacerbates it. The root cause of this is competition, right? As long as that competition exists, people will find ways. The Shuangjian policy itself does not address the root cause of the issue. Lu Ai is catching up with some friends. They are fellow mothers who have children of similar ages. Shuangjian is also in the same age. Shuangjian is still in the same age. Shuangjian is also in the same age. Shuangjian is still 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 in the same age. 对，后面后面很多机构关了，然后我都想了，这下好了，可以解决钱了。然后我们朋友说，别人你不补，别人是在这种一对一的，你看一下这个差距，真的就是贫富差距拉出来了。你看有钱的人，以后怎么怎么样？哎，想了一下，好像那就一起又补又补。我认识一个王牌老师，他双节以后，他说他单已经排满了。不用，就是双节以后他生意反而更好，他就直接说你不要来。因为他已经没有档期了，他等你玩四年级以后再说。政府导向是好的，但是真正落地，像这种普通普通人的话，我们普通家庭，他还是为了孩子好，他不会说受这个来影响，你知道吗？对，因为对于政府来说的话，这种他的这种什么那种小孩的这种压力啊，学校的这种政策啊，他其实都是往好的方面去去导的，因为现在是。一个是理论型的，一个是现在国家是需要技术型的人才，因为现在国家是缺这种人才的。还有一个，现在初中就开始分流了，成绩好的就可以读高中，然后考大学，对不对？对。你成绩不好的，你初中就 over 了，你就去读技术人才了。At sixteen, students in China sit for Zhongkao. On a national level, majority will enter regular high schools. About 40% will enter vocational high schools as a last resort. These schools teach technical skills for employment, including hairdressing and catering services.
Graduates of vocational education also face stigma and are paid lower than their peers from traditional universities. Yuan Mei's son will be sitting for Zhang Kao this year. She wants her son to ultimately enter a good university. Well, 即便它不是一个正点高中，它至少是学习的方面。当然，但是你要进到职高教育里面，它可能就是已经学学科目，基本上学习就停滞了。Hoping to boost the image of vocational schools, China revised the vocational education law in 2022. It elevated the status of vocational schools, making it on par with general education. This was the first major revision of the law in 25 years. 当然国家的大政策是未来是要发展蓝领工人职高这一块但是实际上我们知道的是很多家长面对的是这个职高教育就是发展的并不均衡我觉得核心还是国家给的出入不多现在大家能看见到的就是Chinese New Year is around the corner, and it's the first time in over a year that Yanxia and her husband are home. The kids have been attending private school for two years. Tong Tong's overall grades have improved, but a certain subject remains a problem. Because 我就把我的希望寄托在你们身上，我不想让你们走我的老路，我要你去选你舅舅，你两个舅舅，你这个舅舅跟你那个舅舅，知道不？你看你，你舅舅的他的工资，他一个月的工资比我们跟你爸爸
找到一个好朋友，敬个礼，敬礼，握握手，你是我的好朋友。我们家长只能就是说，去有远瞻性的去看到下一代的时代的要求，我们尽量的去做一些事情，去帮助他们更好的在他们那个时代将来能够去更好的生存。他学的越多，我觉得他将来明辨是非的能力越多，他的能力就越强。这是我们能给他带来的路。